Okay, I have five tips that are going to help you get more power with your forehand. Okay, tip number one, coil the upper body. Okay, you're in that ready position. You see a ball come to your forehand side. The first thing you want to do is coil the upper body. Keep the left hand on the throat of the racket. That'll ensure that you turn those shoulders and get that good coil. So when you coil like this, you're, you're, you're creating power. You're, you're creating torque here that you can unleash when you swing. You can release that power from this coil. Okay, that's tip number one. Tip number two, use the legs, okay? Power comes from the ground up. So you're gonna coil and you're gonna start to bend those knees. Tennis pros are famous for saying, bend your knees. Why? First of all, it helps you get that racket below the ball so you can get good net clearance. But also, as I mentioned, power comes from the ground up. So when you coil and load those legs by bending and turning the hips, when you go to hit the ball, you can unleash tremendous power lifting with your legs as you hit the ball. This illustration may help you get an idea of how much you want to use the legs. Okay, so when you see the ball, right, you're turning, you're coiling and you're loading the legs. Now, sometimes you have to get very low, okay, for a shot down here. So, but you're lifting as you hit. Now, on a ball that's up in your strike zone, waist high or to chest high, you know, you don't have to bend as much. But the idea is get the rear end down. Bend the knees so you can explode as you come up. You don't want to bend at the waist. That's the worst thing you can do. You get off balance. Third tip, increase the length of your swing. Racket head speed is what's one of the keys to power. If you have a longer swing, you can generate more racket head speed. So, Remember to bring the racket back when you coil and set the leg. See my racket's high. Okay, you want that racket high on the take back. Now from here, it's going to drop down and then come up. Now that's a loop swing, whatever you want to call it, a uh, J swing. I don't know, there's so many different things out there today, but basically you're creating a longer swing. You know, some players just go from here to here and they stop the racket. So if you just go from here to here and stop, now the, you have to fire the muscles forward to generate any kind of racket head speed. But when you come back high with the racket, okay, now when this racket drops, it's starting to pick up speed. By the time it reaches the low point of the backswing, the racket's going 20, 30 miles an hour and picking up speed really fast. And that forward swing, you're gonna get a lot of acceleration. Fourth tip, use your breathing to stay relaxed. So as you see the ball coming, okay, here, so I'm gonna, inhale, let's say right about here, I'm inhaling so I can exhale as I hit the ball. You'll hear players grunt all the time. They, that audible sound lets them know that they are exhaling. Why is exhaling so important? It keeps your muscles relaxed. When we exhale, we relax. Now, you don't want tight muscles. If you're holding your breath, what happens is you tend to start to grip the racket tighter, your muscles get tight, and tight muscles do not move fast. You want loose, loose. So, coordinate your breathing. You see the ball? 
right here. Start to take that inhale and then exhale. Fifth tip, do not hold the racket tight. As I just mentioned, if you're holding the racket tight, it's going, you're going, your whole arm is going to be tight, okay? Right up to your shoulder. And a loose shoulder is one of the keys to creating that fast acceleration, that racket head speed. So on a scale of one to 10, if I grip the racket oh, as tight as I can, I got white knuckles there, you don't want to be near that. Don't be near a 10. I typically, when I'm practicing or just playing, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm holding the, the racket like I would hold a small bird. If I had a parakeet in my hand or a sparrow, I'm not trying to crush it, okay? So I'm just holding it lightly and then boom, I may firm up to three or four at contact, but nowhere near 10. And that keeps, as long as you know you hit it pretty much in the sweet spot, you're going to be fine. So that's the fifth tip. Do not hold the racket tight. I'm going to give you a bonus tip. One more tip. You ever notice how Andre Rublev grunts? Okay, now sometimes, you know, he's just like, you know, he's making that grunt, you know, and but sometimes his grunt, it even uh, gets louder. It, ex it, it just becomes more forceful, more intense. And, you know, I think that helps him to even generate more speed because he relaxes by that exhale, by that sound that he's making. I, I, I forget exactly how he does it, but it's just, it's just like, yeah, you know, it's like, huh, you know, so that can also help that, that grunting. Okay. So, you know, don't go crazy with this. We don't, we don't want any more. Uh, I mean, I don't want to mention any names, but some, some grunting is, is, uh, it's, it's almost annoying or it is annoying. <laughs> Anyway, but anyway, you got to be beyond Borg, you know, don't let anything bother you when you're out there, you know, if the other guy's grunting too loud, don't worry about it. But anyway, those are my six tips. Let's take a closer look. Okay, let's take a look in slow motion here. I see the ball to the forehand. I start my coil. Notice the left hand's on the racket. Now, notice the racket is high. This, this will allow a longer swing, more acceleration. Okay, right there, I'm loading the legs. You can see that rear leg bending. From here, I'm dropping down below the ball and exploding up from this point. So notice the front leg comes off the ground because I'm lifting on this. That's where the legs come in. The grip is loose. The finish is high over the shoulder. Okay, here's a suggestion. When you go out to practice this with a hitting partner or a pro, whatever, ball machine, don't focus on too many things. I gave you five tips, but only focus on one or two maximum. Two is the maximum I want you to think about at any one time when you're working on your stroke. Okay, so let's, you, let's say you picked the coil and the load with the legs, okay, loading the legs. So that's two, that's it. Just work on that for a while. Then you can work on your coordinating your breathing and creating a longer swing, a longer swing pattern so you can generate more acceleration. Then maybe it's just creating, you know, that longer swing and 
holding the racket like you'd be holding that little sparrow or that little parakeet. You don't want to crush it. Don't hold the racket too tight. But the point I'm trying to make, don't overload your mind. You've got to keep it simple. Please give me a like, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. This is where I can help you take your game to a higher level. So I've got videos on lots of different subjects. Please check out the channel. And uh, right now, <clears throat> during the US Open, exciting US Open, it looks like Djokovic and Alcaraz are headed towards the final, but we'll see. Um, Tiafo's playing great. Ben Shelton is playing off the charts. That's going to be a really good match, those two. So we'll look at that. And uh, right now, we've got a sale. All 13 of my digital courses for a great price. So don't miss that. Check it out. All the best, guys, to your tennis success. Take care.